Well, hello, happy people. You got a vehicle, you hit the brake, and the pedal goes all the way down to the floor. And just stops when you hit the bottom of the floor, and your brakes feel mushy, and it doesn't want to stop. Well, I'm going to show you how to fix it. Now, the first thing we want to do, we want to get up to the master cylinder and check the fluid level and make sure the fluid level is okay. If it's okay there, then you're good. But if you're losing fluid, the next thing we need to do is go underneath and look for leaks. Okay, now the first thing I'm going to do when I'm under here, I am going to look for brake lines. I'm going to look at all the brake lines, make sure I don't see any fluid leaking anywhere. Now, if you don't see any fluid leaking anywhere, that is good because sometimes when you have leaky brake lines, your pedal will slowly go to the floor and your reservoir will drop down and you'll keep adding fluid. So that's a good telltale sign that you do have a leak. But at this point, I don't have a leak. So the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and ch double check all my wheel cylinders. Now for me, my Expedition sets up pretty high, but if you're unfortunate and you have a car that sets really low, you may have to jack it up and crawl up under to actually check all four wheels where the brakes are and also check the master cylinders for leaks. So let's check the master cylinders on each one of these wheels and see if we find any leaks. Okay, the left front driver's side, there's a bleeder, and I see no leaks, so this is in good shape, and I replaced the brake, brake pads not long ago, so I know we're good there, so let's go check the uh, passenger side. And here is the front passenger side, the bleeder, bone dry, I see no leaks, and I got brand new brake pads on this side, so this side is good, let's go to the back. And here is the right rear, and I see no leaks, there is the bleeder. It's tight, no leaks, and it has brand new pads on this side, so this is okay. So finally, let's go check the driver's side. And finally, here is the left rear, and you can see my bleeder. It's dry, I see no leaks, and this has brand new pads on it. So the vehicle has four brand new pads. I can't find any brake line leaks. And everything else looks dry, and I know I've got to paint this red. I just like my calipers painted so I can keep track of the leaks and so forth. Makes it a little easier and keeps the rust down. So our problem is going to be, dun dun dun, master cylinder, yep, it is bad what's happening, the seals or the uh, piston inside of there, it is shot, and when you put your foot on the brake, the fluid passes beyond the seals and uh, loses pressure and your pedal goes to the floor. So we're going to fix that, we're going to put a brand new master cylinder on it, and there it is, I got a new one, it was uh, $48. And if I take my old one back later today, I get $8 back. So about $40 you can replace these. So we're going to have to have a couple of uh, tools here and some brake fluid. So we're going to go ahead and put this on. And uh, for uh, uh, video purposes, I'll go ahead and take this out of the way. And I won't show you how to do it. If you have anything in the way, it's optional. You can just take it out there and have yourself... It'll just give yourself a little more room to work around areas that are pretty tight. But for me, I think I'll just take this out and this will give me plenty of room to get in there and we'll start taking this apart and we'll put it on. First thing I did was pull my air cleaner out of the way. It is huge and you can see all the extra space I now have. And you want to see something crazy? This is 2016. The last time this was changed, 2006. And people wonder why their cars break down, they have problems. It's maintenance. You've got to do maintenance. You can't go 10 years without changing your air filter. You're going to have issues. Now, uh, what I've done uh, so far, I've got some tools. I've got this uh, brake wrench. You've got a 3 8 and a 7 uh, 16 You can buy these. They're 4 or $5. Pretty cheap. You will need one for the uh, back line right there to kind of break it loose. Now, the bigger one up front, it is a 5 8 we're going to break these guys loose. We're going to unhook a couple of wires here. We've got our light, our brake light wire, I guess, or cruise control light. We have a secondary wire back here on the back. Now, this plug is kind of hard to get out. It goes on the uh, reservoir. And I had to actually take a little screwdriver like this and push up on the bottom to release that tab because I just couldn't get it, and it worked out really well. And all we got to do now is unhook um, this uh, front brake line and the rear one. Now the front one broke loose really easy. I will show you. No problem. The back one broke loose too, but also it's turning the line. So I'm going to have to uh, put a little oil on it. I'm going to tap on it a little while and see if I can break this line loose out of the, uh, the nut there that's screwed in. Because I don't want to have to twist that line in too. And I don't want to certainly have to replace it. So this may take just a little longer. And all we got to do is take off two bolts back there. One on that side and one on that side. And it's pretty much ready to come off. Now the caliper, the new one I got, sitting there, this comes off. You just pull this off 
and you set it down on here and that's basically how that works uh, we'll get to that a little bit later so let me go ahead and get the rest of this off here and uh, we'll see how this goes okay now what I did I got my little propane torch I put a little heat on that right there and I just gently turned it back and forth until that nut broke free from the rest of the line and you can see now that nuts turning and I won't have to worry about replacing that line so that is good news and now I'll go ahead and do the second uh, I'll do this on the second one here and it's am I having the same issue here and now, as I was heating it I took my little hammer and I just kept kept hitting it tapping it and breaking the breaking it free because it gets a little rusty down in there and sometimes they get a little hard to take out and uh, so forth so let's take the other one out now I did the same thing with the bottom one it took me about five minutes but I eventually got it and now you can see I can turn that and it will come loose so that really had me worried because if you break these lines off you're gonna have to go get a kit you're gonna have to uh, clamp uh, put a uh, spacer kit on it and all that and you don't want to have to get into that so uh, if you have this problem just take your time heat it a little bit tap on it and just work it back and forth and uh, just have a little patience it will come loose once you get beyond this everything else is pretty much a piece of cake so let's go ahead and take these back bolts out now all right now two quick things i am using a seven eighths seven eighths uh wrench i decided to go ahead and break this guy here loose the, the, the back uh adapter for the brake line because it'll make it easier to break this loose if this is still bolted onto the uh, brake booster so we'll go ahead and break this loose i think you can see that there it's so bright out here today all right that's loose and now i am using a 7 8 socket deep well on this guy up front this is a sensor for your uh, cruise control it releases the uh, cruise control when you hit your brake just stick a socket on there and go ahead and break this loose now uh, this will give you plenty of leverage with this bolted to the uh, booster and that is loose so now what we got to do is take those out of the way and go ahead and take out those two back bolts and this guy is ready to come out okay i got the two uh adapters and the uh, sensor off or the adapter and the sensor off i should say now to make it a little bit easier i usually just go ahead and pull this plastic uh, uh, reservoir off now while it's bolted on the uh, booster because it makes it a little bit easier and these things sometimes can be really hard to get off so sometimes you have to take something underneath and kind of pry up a little bit as you're pulling up and I typically sometimes I'll use the back of a uh, ratchet or something but let's see if I can get this up out of here oh, okay there all right there it is all right and it's out and double check make sure there's no seals or anything that's torn or missing but my new one comes with new seals now all i gotta do is go ahead and find 213 deep well sockets uh and take this out and we are ready to uh assemble the new one put it back together and uh bolt it together all right i got my last bolt there uh my nut ready to come off and by the way these turned out to be 14 uh deep well millimeter i thought they were 13. my bad take this out take it off i should say and this bad boy is ready to come out and we just pull out on it and there it is the entire unit and it is ready to be taken back to the parts store and recycled so we'll say goodbye to this guy and we'll start putting a new one on and by the way i did have a little uh pail there just to kind of catch some of the uh brake fluid which is sitting right here it's pretty dirty so i'm not going to reuse it i got new brake fluid and uh to put in it you never want to reuse your old brake fluid this is also a great opportunity if your booster is rusted out a little bit down here uh sand it down a little bit and get you some black paint and paint around it and it'll look really good when you stick it back on so that's what i'm going to do next then i'm going to go ahead and start putting this back together and uh hopefully everything should go just right Ah, looks really good. Looks almost new. Now we'll start putting it back together. Uh, just a side note, they actually make two types. You make a type with cruise control and without. The one without cruise control was actually more than the one with cruise control. I'm not sure why, but it was about $80, about half the price. But uh, now all we have to do is go ahead and start assembling. And the first thing we want to do on the side, there is a little O-ring on this adapter housing right here. And it says right here on the paper, attention, attention. you got to put the O-ring on. If you don't, it'll avoid the warranty. Here's the O-ring. We're going to stick the new O-ring on there and go ahead and screw that in. All right, we've got our new O-ring on. And some of these systems are set up a little different. You may not have this, and you may. 
So just, just so you know, I'm going to snug this tight. I'll tighten all this up once it's on there, bolt it on. It makes it a little bit easier. And I got a little bit of thread a gasket maker on this guy here. I'll go ahead and stick this on, screw that down, and snug it. And once I get it on, I'll tighten it all down on the vehicle. Now we just go ahead and finish up, tighten up the two uh, nuts. And like I said, these are 14 millimeter. You got to use a deep well. And to make this a little easier, I ended up taking off this housing. And now I can just kind of screw it back in. The extension got in the way. And now we'll go ahead and tighten up these guys here. Tighten this down. And like I said, I got my new seal there. It's on. And you notice how nice the booster looks now with the, the new paint. It looks really good. No rust. And we'll tighten that down to about 40 pounds. And now we'll get our deep well, which is kind of sitting right there. Tighten this guy up. Just snug. It doesn't have to be terribly tight. <clears throat> I have quarter, uh, half inch drives, but I couldn't find. I actually lost one of my 7 8 sockets going down the highway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Left it in the engine bay and didn't know it. So I had to use this guy here. This will work, and there that is on. And I like to turn it where you can actually have that excess to the clip to release it and reconnect it. So now all I got to do is go to get the reservoir, and we'll go ahead and stick that on, which is setting right there. I'm going to clean it up real quick before we put it on. We'll go ahead and stick the reservoir on. I always like to put just a little bit of grease on the back side to make it slip down in those uh, seals there a little bit easier. And we'll gently push until it goes in. And I may have to use two hands. Maybe not. Okay, it's in. So now all I gotta do is go ahead, disconnect a couple of wires, and start hooking up my brake lines. Now I got my back brake line on. It's just kind of snug. Now I don't want to tighten it up all the way. I want to leave it just a little loose because I want to pour brake fluid in the uh, cylinder into the uh, reservoir and see if I can get a little bit of air out of it. And the same thing for the front one. And like I said, this is a 5 eighths. And I'm just gonna kind of snug it, not real tight. And now all we gotta do is go ahead and put brake fluid in and start, just kind of get the uh, air out of it. And uh, start this thing up here in a few minutes to see what we have. But I will have to stick my air cleaner on here, so that'll take a couple of minutes. But I think you still will be able to see if we have to bleed the system, which is a pretty simple job. And looks like it's just about full. And it is full. Things back together. I got all my uh, nuts here tight on the lines. And I went inside and when, when I first pushed it to the floor, obviously I knew I wasn't going to have any brakes. But what I did, I just kept pushing that pedal for five minutes. And eventually it built up. And I think the system pretty much bled itself. And another thing you can do, and I did this one time, is if you have a board, a little two and a half foot board, put it on your pedal, push down on your pedal, and put the uh, two before up against it, or the board, whatever, up against your seat, and put your seat all the way forward, and hold that pedal, and when you do that, come out here and uh, release this nut just a little bit, and some fluid will come out, and then tighten it back down, and come back inside. Take your board out. Of course, pedal be, it'll be low again and just pop it until it comes back up and right there I have a really hard pedal now what I've got to do is uh, go ahead and start it up and verify that but like I said sometimes you get lucky and the system will bleed itself if you uh, kind of take your time if it doesn't work then you may have to go under, underneath the car and loosen up all the little bleeder bolts on the, uh, the bleeder nuts on the um, calipers on each wheel to get the air out of the system. Other than that, uh, if you're a one-man band, that's how I do it. If you have another buddy around, well, he can probably do that for you while you pump the pedal. And also, before we start it up, I just wanted to also remind you, they do make a bleeder kit. It comes with two little hoses and your little plastic uh, uh, screws uh, that you uh, screw in the side with holes. And uh, there's little adapters you could just uh, screw in the side and run the tubes back into the top of your reservoir and pump it. Now we'll get the air out of the system, but still you have to pump the brakes and get onto the bleeders underneath to get the air out of the system. So let's go ahead and start it up and see what we get. Okay, we've got it started up and let's see what we got. We'll stick it in the air, put foot on the brake, and uh, it's a lot better. But it still feels a little mushy, so I am going to still go ahead and... Uh, bleed all four bleeders 
they're easy to get to and it will just make it a lot better but I do have much better pedal now about halfway but it could be better so uh, since I know where all my bleeders are I'll go ahead and bleed all four go ahead and bleed the front left side the board is in the pedals all the way down up against the seat and there is a bleeder and I got my 3 8 inch wrench and we'll open it up since I've got pressure on the pedal and out comes fluid and that's what we want and I heard the pedal go down inside and we'll close this back up and put the cap back on back inside we take the board off and we pump the pedal again and now we put the board back against the seat like that and make sure it's nice and tight and now we go underneath and do the left rear okay there's the bleeder got my 3 8 wrench 8 inch wrench we'll put that on there and open that up and you'll probably see fluid come out yep a lot of fluid and I heard the brake pedal go down and I didn't see any air, so that's good. We'll close it back up and put the cap back on. And go inside and pump the brake again and do the uh, right rear. Back inside, take our foot, let the, board, let the board fall, pump it again. Pedal's getting really hard. Put the board back up against the pedal and against the seat again. And we'll go do the right rear side. And here is the right rear. Of course, my uh, cap is missing on this side. They all seem like they come up missing. And now we'll go ahead and release this, open it up, and out fluid comes. And I really didn't see any air that time, maybe one or two bubbles. And we'll close it up, and we'll go back inside, do the pedal one more time. Back in one more time. Take the board out, let the pedal come up, pump it again, and that pedal is really, really hard now. Push it back as hard as we can, put the board up against the seat, and we'll go and do the front right side. And here is our last caliper. Take the uh, protector boot off. Sometimes they're a little hard to get off. I'm holding the camera with one hand and doing this with the other, so I may have to take my gloves off. There we go. Let's open this up, see what we get. Hopefully the camera, the light's not, sun's not shining on the camera. And we'll open this up, final bleeder, and see what we get. Oh. Not too much. Not really, I didn't see any air bubbles, so that's good. And I heard the pedal go down inside. And now we'll tighten this up for a final time. And we are ready to go in and test the system and see what we, see what we have. Now we'll take the board out, we're done, and pump that pedal. Brake's really hard, so let's start it up and see what we've got. Okay, finally folks, I've got a nice full pedal. We took care of it. It took a while to get the air out of the system, but once I got the air out, big improvement. So uh, there you go, that's how you change your uh, master cylinder on one of these. Uh, SUVs and like I said if you have a car it's probably the same process but it gets a little uh, tedious getting the air out of these systems it takes a while but if you have a buddy to help you to bleed those brakes on your wheels it really makes a difference so that's the end of the video guys thanks for watching and good luck and if you have any questions I'll try to answer them but uh, before you start if you have brake problems look underneath make sure you don't have a leak first because you don't want to go replacing uh, stuff on the top expensive stuff only to find out you had a leak on the bottom and your uh, brake booster or caliper was just fine. All right, thanks a lot for watching everybody and have a good one.